just realized that as I am filling up these bowls right here, preparing to blanch some peaches today, you can probably hear my Berkey dripping. So <laughs> it is full. I used as much Berkey water as possible. That's actually my priority is heating up over on the stove right now. All of that is Berkey water. Unfortunately, there's just never enough Berkey water. I try as much as I can, but I figure boiling the peaches in the boiling water, it's gonna absorb more than when we plant them in cold water. And so it's more important that that be fluoride free than this one. So while that water is actually getting going and boiling, and this water is getting nice and cold because I'm going to pop some ice cubes in here. <laughs> I wanted to share with you guys in today's video some of the ways that we are doing food preservation here in our apartment with our CSA and our tiny little apartment garden. Because until about last year, I was under the impression that the only homesteading skill that I could really do while living in an apartment was cooking from scratch. That I don't know why, but for some reason in my brain, that's all that ever connected. And part of that could be that I have no background in my family of homesteading whatsoever on my side of the family. Actually, my husband's side does have some of that, but I have not yet met his extended family that does most of that to be able to learn a lot from them. So I have been learning my bulk of homesteading here on YouTube. I will link a couple of my favorite channels in the description below for you. Homesteading family, Justin Rhodes being two of them. I enjoy following different YouTube channels on this because you get different ideas from different people and everybody's situation is slightly different. The amount of space they have, their family size, all of that. Now, our family currently right now is just my husband and I, and we, like I said, live in an apartment in the suburbs of Denver. So we are on Colorado Front Range and we do not have a ton of space. We're not in a teeny, teeny tiny little apartment. We have about 900 square feet, but honestly, the storage is kind of awkward. There's not much storage. We don't have a pantry except for the coat closet that I converted to one. And so that means that our coats are then in our main closet, which doesn't give us that much space. I did do a video on food storage in small places that you can find linked below as well if you're interested in food storage. But I wanted to share with you just a couple of the super simple food preservation things that we're doing just in the last few days. Today, clearly, I have already mentioned peaches. I am about to can peaches. We got in our CSA, an entire case of peaches. These are from the Colorado Western Slope. They are the best, most fantastic peaches that I have ever had are the ones from the Colorado Western Slope. Now, these actually, this case that is currently empty because I would not be able to lift a case of peaches this easily if it were full. But the um, case that we got here are a globe peach. I think it's red globe. I'll be sure to pop that up here on the screen when I edit, but I believe they were the red globe peaches and they are wonderful for canning. The last case we got a couple of weeks ago were a different, were a different one. I'm not exactly sure what that variety was. I should probably look it up, but those were fantastic for fresh eating and freezing. I have about two gallons of frozen peach slices in our freezer. I made some jam a couple weeks before that with some from our trip out to the Western Slope. And today I'm going to be canning peaches in a light, simple syrup. But while that water is heating up, let me show you a few other food preservation things we have been working on here in our apartment. So this last week in our CSA, we got a ton of corn. I think we had about 11 ears of corn between the couple ears we had left over from the week before and then what we got this week. And so I shucked a bunch of that and up here in our cabinet, whoop, we have our fermenting shelf up here in the cabinet. 
And this is where I keep jars that we are currently fermenting and I keep them on a little towel. Now this is super important. I actually had to switch the towel out last night because corn has a lot of sugar in it. So when it ferments, <laughs> it explodes. And I forgot to burp my jars yesterday. Now, ooh, let me take you down this way. This is soured sweet corn. Now it just started on Saturday, so it still has quite a bit of fermenting to do. But we have these really cool pickle pipes on here that all you have to do is just squeeze the top right there and that lets the air out. Now, when I checked on them last night, they were literally in a bubble up here. This whole thing had bubbled up with air, which is why it had overflowed. Oh, please forgive me for the yard work people outside as I'm filming this, of course. So we have several jars of the sweet corn, about two quarts worth. It's going to be fermented corn. And hopefully that will make the corn a little bit more digestible. And then we'll be able to pop that into our freezer and we don't have to worry about it spoiling. We also have some fermented jalapenos up there that we got started on Saturday. Those are actually from the farmer's market. They are from the same farm that our CSA is, but we haven't started getting jalapenos in our CSA share yet. These are the peaches that are left after making ice cream and eating some over ice cream that we will be enjoying in a can. Um, oh yeah, I have my thieves out here because these are already washed. I had washed them in my thieves fruit and veggie soak. So they're nice and clean. They're drying out here. And then I'm going to blanch them to get the skins off because that is the easiest way to remove the skins from the peaches. So we're heating up water in my giant stock pot. Then over here on the kitchen table, you will see a bunch of corn husk. These are left over. I have already washed them and I'm drying them out here on actually our splatter screen. See, y'all get creative with the tools that you have. You don't need to invest in a whole bunch of different other tools. So we've got the splatter screen that gives some nice airflow underneath there and those are drying nicely. And then the corn cobs over here, these are actually from last week. They're almost done. I can feel, I'm gonna leave them out just a couple days to be sure. And then these guys are from Saturday, the corn that we shucked for our fermented corn. Now over here, now, when those are dry, they will get added to the bags that are currently right here in our drawer that we are saving these for. You can use corn husk for so many different things and corn cobs. We had thrown the first set away. We just put them in the trash can. We would love to compost them, but we don't have a compost currently where we're at and clearly in an apartment. You can't have chickens <laughs> or pigs or any other animals to feed them. So I started looking up and doing a little bit of research because I was curious. I'm like, I hate throwing away things that I know have other uses. And so I did some digging and drying out your corn cobs makes them fantastic fire starters. So they are fantastic for starting fires and they burn when you burn them they actually burn into coals instead of burning like paper and burning into ash so they turn really hot they give you a really nice fire so i have the corn cups for that and then also dried corn cobs make great pot scrubbers is what i have read we have not tried it yet i'll give you an update after i've tried those but i can see exactly how that would work so i'm excited to have some of those really eco-friendly pot scrubbers to use that will be kind of upcycling some of the corn cobs but honestly i want to save a lot for our fires to get some really good fire starters just throughout the winter but then also to have on hand in case we were to need them for anything i might even add a couple into our emergency backpacks or little bug out bags that I have started working on. Then the corn husk are, of course you can use them for tamales, You can, which we have never made. And if you have a great tamale recipe, be sure you share that in the description with me below because I would love to know. We'd love to try tamales. You can use them for that. You can also, you could burn them as well, but you could also use them for decorating and decorating and I'm really kind of excited about that. So I saw a DIY um, wreath using the corn husk 
as well as then using the corn cob as a center and making flowers with the corn husk around the outside. We'll see how ambitious I get later this fall and how much more preserving we have if there's time to do that. But it would be super fun, especially if you have kids, that would be a great thing to have them working on. But also if you just wanna nourish your creative side in addition to the practical preserving part of it. You may have also noticed a whole bunch of basil on the kitchen table as well. I have actually two bases of basil, one there and one over on top of our wine fridge right now. That, that is the basil that we just pulled out of our garden and on our porch. And we have propagated all three of the basil plants that were out there and are starting new basil plants from those cuttings while the original basil plants are sitting in the water in here right now waiting to be turned into pesto this week. Basil itself does not preserve super well by freezing it or drying it. It doesn't retain a lot of its flavor. However, if you make pesto with it first, the pesto freezes really well. So we are planning to make a big thing of pesto probably tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to get to it today with the peaches getting going canning, but my water is now steaming, which means this is close and I'm going to jump into that. But before I do that, there's one last thing. I just remembered sitting over here is a single ripe tomato. What are you going to do with a single ripe tomato? I mean, you could eat this. It's very good. But I also have several ripe tomatoes that are smaller on our porch that would be fantastic to throw into pasta that we're making this week, especially paired with the pesto. Mm, so good. However, I also want to have some home canned tomatoes for this winter. I would love to use them for chili. I would love them to have, would love to have them on hand in glass jars over having to buy the stuff at the store that typically comes in aluminum. Sometimes you can find them in glass. This last year, it was a little trickier to get what you were looking for, right? So I have heard that freezing your tomatoes when they are fresh like this is a fantastic way to preserve them before preserving them. And you can keep them ripe in the freezer until you're ready to deal with them while you deal with everything else that you can't do that with. And so I have a bag here in our freezer. I have a bag here in our freezer that has started tomatoes to preserve. So I'm gonna add this guy right in here along with these other two so that we can work on building a stash of our own home jarred tomatoes. Now we likely won't have enough to get us through the whole fall and winter without purchasing any this year, but hey, it's our first year. <laughs> and having some is better than having none. And that's what I want to remind you in closing today is that one small step, one new food preserved, one new change is better than having done nothing. One more thing is more prepared than you were the day before and is making progress. You don't have to do everything at once. In fact, you can't do everything at once, but you can do something new and make progress towards having a more supplied pantry and food stash for yourself and your family, giving you not only more value for those foods that you've invested in, and cutting out the middleman for a lot of them, but also increasing the nutrition since you're getting it really fresh off the vine. You know everything that goes into them and you have had your hands on it from beginning to the end. So that's all for today. I'm looking forward to seeing you again real soon on another new video. Until next time, take care friends. Cheers.